Hello and welcome to Film 253, Narrative for the Digital Age. Today's lecture is about found footage films and the rise of found footage films after the digital turn. In the last two decades, we can see the rise of found footage film genres, uh, movies like Cloverfield, Blair Witch Project, um, uh, The Last Exorcist, uh, Paranormal Activity, and so on. They all belong to this genre of found footage film. Although this genre is not something new. Um, for example, we had films like Cannibal Holocaust. So is it really um, a revolutionary uh, idea with the digital uh, cinema and new media? Or is it just an evolutionary, just these types of uh, films and the narrative approach to them is becoming more popular, more appealing, more realistic because now people all have some means for digital recording available to them. For several reasons, the idea of using uh, the diegetic camera, as I call it, is appealing to the contemporary audiences. Unlike the classical Hollywood cinema that was trying to hide the process of movie making from the viewers. This um, new found footage films are inviting an embodied experience of the new media. When we think of the camera as the second eye, uh, its movements are familiar for us as the movements of the person that is filming it. Cognitively, this creates a realistic sense of participating in uh, the process of movie making. Even our anxieties are going to be duplicated. For example, if there is a handheld camera or a cell phone, there is a moment that the battery is gone and we are not going to see parts of uh, what was going on and we, are, we need to actually fill the gap ourselves. When, for example, we see um, the battery icon is very low and then we see black screen and then there is a temporal gap between that scene and the next one. When I talk about the embodied experience, it's not that the actual audiences need to move or like video games, they have control over the narrative uh, of the film. But when a horror movie, for example, is presented to the viewers through devices familiar to the audiences, such as smartphones, it detaches the conventional distance that the audiences had with the screen by altering this experience of cinematic reality. Of course, there is an economical reason for the popularity of this genre among the filmmakers and creation of many sequels for each of these found footage films. But economics are not the only reason. I think how new media challenges our traditional empathy with the characters. And remember, in the first week, we were uh, discussing David Bordwer's uh, theory of alliance and allegiance is an important factor in popularity of new found footage films that are not just horror, actually, in other genres. Now we can see directors try to use diegetic camera point of views. Another idea, another um, narrative theories that we talked about in our first week um, was restricted narration that we can see in these um, found footage films are always maintained and used. Our understanding about what is happening in the world of the film is attached and limited to the point of view of the protagonist. The diegetic camera is a camera that is recognized by the viewer as it exists in the world of the film. That is different than, again, uh, classical Hollywood cinema when we have just a subjective camera. Usually in classical Hollywood films, we know more than the characters because that subjective camera is going to reveal to us more than what the character would see. However, our concepts of um, identification has been challenged in these films because our point of view is duplicated by the device that the protagonist is recording uh, the events on. I think the traditional theories of narrative do not perfectly work for these uh, found footage films, these uh, new media. 
found footage films because the film's narrative is not offering anything fixed um, or perception, attention, um, processing what is going on is constantly changing uh, when we watch um, these realistic found footage films. At the same time that we totally identify with the point of view of the characters and so there is a restricted narration because unlike observational camera we don't see the entire events and the way we construct the story is limited. So this is contradictory because at the same time that we are in um, total identification with the point of view of the protagonist. We don't know the protagonist. Um, up to the middle of the movie, when they turn the camera into themselves or they film mirrors, for example, oh, that's how the, our protagonist looks like. Uh -huh. The image is also distorted in a very realistic way. For example, if the camera operator that we identify with is running in fear, usually we see fragmented image of the ground. We don't really see the monster. We are not going to have a clear view of what was going on because he's just running with the camera. At the same time, even the quality of the sound is changing or accidentally is turned off for a minute. Uh, so we never, we always get a distorted image. We always uh, miss something because the character is running in fear. Another thing that has changed for the audiences is how they respond to the character's emotion. Um, traditionally, close-ups and facial expressions were very important for the audiences to realize what emotional reaction they should have with regards to characters who they care for. However, in these films, um, the emotion of the character is going to be expressed by the movements of the camera. When we talk about the digital camera, it's not that the point of view of the camera is always the point of view of the characters. However, we are going to see the events through the point of view of a camera that we know its object of attention is always related by the character on the screen and his motivations. For example, when the character is running and what we see is not exactly the point of view of the character or like um, paranormal activity when the camera is put on a tripod by a character. We are going to identify with the camera's point of view but this point of view is there not because of the subjective camera used by the director, but apparently uh, by one of the characters in the movie. This also challenges Andre Bazin's notion of a single take, or what actually we call a shot or a shot transition, because the scene goes in pixel, uh, usually, even there is a timing, for example, in this scene from Paranormal Activity, when it jumps because, again, something like the changing the battery or for such reasons. So is it still the same shot or a different shot? So classic concepts of shot and shot transitions do not really work anymore in contemporary cinema, specifically in these found footage films. In other words, the cuts are not done for uh, propelling the narrative forward in a classical term uh, or for aesthetic reasons. The cuts are forced because of technological failures or uh, problems with operating them instantly. Another difference between digital camera films and classical Hollywood uh, style of films or other um, more observational films is uh, the use of space or understanding the digesis in the film. Because we always get characters' point of view, um, off screen space are not clearly offered. And that's actually a very important thing in horror movies. We usually need to know the places the character can uh, get refuge in closets, exit door. Uh, stairs and so on. Uh, so in these films, all of a sudden, in with more immediacy, actually, 
we realize the design of the film's diegesis. In the majority of fictional films, the camera is not part of the film's diegesis. However, in these found footage films, the camera is part of the diegesis. We have a diegetic camera, and for this reason, there is a new form of self-consciousness, new self-reflexivity that was absent in classical Hollywood cinema, or even the kind of reflexivity used in post-classical cinema. As well, the diegetic camera films reproduce the conventions of documentary filmmaking and reality TV shows. That's why maybe they are more horrifying, although they really do not show the monsters or ghosts in their um, entirety. These films often use direct address, in that the character directly talks to the lens of the camera. However, it's again different than the direct address that we saw earlier in this course, for example, the films of Jean-Luc Godard or Woody Allen, because the use of direct address in those films um, are there to destroy the illusion of realism. Addressing the camera in those films is to break the, the realist illusion, uh, the, what they call the fourth wall. However, in these films, because camera is part of the diegesis and we know it's there, direct address is not going to destroy sense of realism. Uh, so direct address is part of the film's diegesis and it's just there to express what the character feels to the audience. When that guy was lighting homeless people on fire in the subway? Jesus, I... What? Maybe not the best topic for conversation down here. Right. I just can't stop thinking how scary it would be if a flaming homeless guy came oh, out of the dark right now. Seriously. I'm just saying. In conclusion, the found footage films are popular because they can easily merge the conventions of documentary filmmaking and reality TV shows with that of fictional filmmaking. These films also have different character development. We learn about the characters not through close-ups or uh, emotional reaction, uh, their facial expressions or the stories about them. We learn specifically about the main characters uh, through how he or she is operating the camera or other recording devices. Still, these films follow three acts structure. There are climactic moments, there are moments that are very emotional. However, these moments are also captured by amateur diegetic crew. And for that reason, maybe these films are becoming more engaging for the audiences. Um, they definitely identify with the protagonist in a deeper level. In recent years, the sequels to horror movies and the slasher movies of the 70s, 80s, and 90s are done in 
the style of found footage films. For example, The Last Exorcism, even a Scream 4. And for this week, The Diary of the Dead. Diary of the Dead is very different than other Romero's Living Dead series. Well, it's a found footage film. It's taking place in open space. Uh, there are longer shots because, uh, as again, the definition of shot has been changed in found footage films. And it has this documentary touch to it. Although uh, previous Romero's Living Dead series had influenced by documentary filmmaking, specifically a documentary is coming from Vietnam War. So hopefully you're going to enjoy Diary of the Dead and pay attention to how Romero is using found footage films and also by introducing a second camera in the middle of the movie. He's making the movie more digestible. 